now certainly being Bond and all of that, it gives it a certain kind of um, foundation and reality. So you're a granddaddy Bond? No, I'm a granddaddy Brosnan. Oh. <laughs> and you're, you're from, because you're from Ireland? Yeah. What's the little town called where you come from? It's called Navin, Navin. County Meath. You were there recently and they gave you the freedom of the town? Yeah, I was there last week actually. I went over there and uh, I was doing the MTV Awards and uh, this little town that I come from, which is in uh, Southern Ireland, they decided to give me the keys to the... There's a woman over there going like this. <laughs> uh, I like it. She's blonde. There you go. Um, um, they gave me the keys to the town and it was wonderful and I took my mother back there and uh, so May, my mother and myself went into Navin, went into this small town and they all came out and it was joyous. It was just a wonderful occasion. I left as a boy of 10 years of age. I came back as a man of 46, you know, with a certain life under the belt and you stand there and I've no idea what the key opens or if they've changed the locks or whatever, but it was a great day. Is it true your cousin still lives there? Yeah. And d is it true about the nickname they have for him in the... In 006? The yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Donal. Well, I grew up with Donal, and Donal's mother, actually, Eileen Riley. The last three years of my life there, or the, the, my time there in Navin, she was a wonderful woman. She was a great uh, Irish woman, and uh, she had her son, Donal, and her daughter, Anne, and they took care of me. It was a magic time for me. She had a lodging house, basically, and it was up in a place called St. Finian's Terrace. And uh, it was the last memory I have of living there. And what do they think of your success now? Well, I think they like it. I think they've kind of, uh, they showed up and they embraced, you know, the family, my family, my mother and myself, you know, and uh, it's just one of those things that you never think is going to happen. You don't even think about it, but uh, it was good. And now, is this as good as life can get, or can it get better? Well, this is as good as life is now, you know, I mean, whether it can get better, I don't think about the future too much. I mean, you try and just be in the present and kind of deal with it, what's going on. It's certainly great, and, you know, Bond has allowed me to kind of go off and make my own films, like The Nephew or uh, Thomas Crown Affair. I love that film, The Thomas Crown Affair. Did you see that film? It was a great film. So, you know, um, Bond kind of came into my life once in 86, it kind of went away again, I got on with the career and then it suddenly came round again. So you, you know, you, you, you embrace that and it's such a funny old business, you know, being an actor. Up and down, sure. up and down. And would you ever, I mean, you are going to give Bond up one day, but why, why would you want to give it, you know, if you, do, if you do another one in, say, two years time, you'll be 48 years old. Why would anybody ever want to give up Bond before they had to? Well, because physically it's very demanding. You've got to have the stamina. You're, but Roger I, Moore did it like when he was 103, didn't he? <laughs> oh, oh, good voice. Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, being this character, you have to kind of be able to put yourself in the, in the physical situations that are demanding of the role. And I just don't want... I want to be able to get off the stages, you know, with some dignity. Okay. when the time comes. Well, the film's out a week today. Let's see, let's see a little bit more of a clip. Without Worthers this time. Here we go. Things. When I watch the clips, I'm always looking for different things. And I saw your mouth burn in the Muppet Show. I saw something else in that clip. 
Uh, well, the morning I was, we, we came to do the scene, I was hanging on the wires, and as I was hanging on the wires, uh, I said, let me just have a look at the playback of what the stunt guy did the day before, three days before. So we watched on the playback, and just as he came to the end of the run, the flames licked up his back and caught his hair on fire. But by then it was too late because all the boys were standing around, you know, you say you're going to do the stunt and you don't want to let anybody down, so you hang on the wires and as you're hanging on the wires you look to the right and there's the ambulance and you look to the left and there's the fire brigade. <laughs> so you uh, kind of keep your fingers crossed. That wasn't what I was talking about. What were you talking about? When you help the lady up the ladder, you can't help, help putting your hand on her bottom. Couldn't help it. Sorry, mate. Have a look. Have a look at this. This is, this is fantastic. You found me out. Oh, there you go. Watch, watch, watch. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other thing is, the second thing is, you put your hand on the bottom, and then we all said, well, at least he didn't look at it, her bottom. But then you look at it as well. What's this one? <laughs> so go, the hand goes on the bottom, and then, and then. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you. Yeah. Thanks to Frank and Torio for going to see, but now with Baby Nose, please welcome the art.